Go ninja, go ninja, go. Go ninja, go ninja, go. Go ninja, go ninja, go. Go, 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 go. What's up, guys? It is now here, and I am in the director chair today with my co-director, Jeremy. Sit over there, wave hi, Jeremy. Bossa Nova. How you doing, Nam? How you doing? Hey, I'm doing well. And welcome to Past Attractions. You know, the new Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Mutant Mayhem, the 2023 version, just came out not too long ago as of this recording. May not be as of this recording whenever you watch it in some time, whenever. Might be on streaming services then. So it just came out on streaming services, so take that. And we thought it would be really cool if we go back to catch up to something that was very near and dear to me and Jeremy's heart. The 1990 version, the original, original, the original version of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie. The first. Now, cool thing about this movie, Jeremy, something that I actually didn't know about this movie whenever I was looking up some things about it. Tell me what you didn't know. Is that this movie was rejected by all the studios. Keep dreaming, dude. Shame on them. With it being an independent movie, it became the number one independent movie, like highest grossing independent movie for the longest time. And I will blame Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles for all the Marvel movies, that DC movies, Marvel and DC movies that we have to deal with today. They got, it's for the kids, man. That's what it was aimed for. You gotta blame the kids. You gotta blame us at that time. We were the reason why that movie became a phenomenon. I know, right? And, you know, it was outseeded by uh, the Blair Witch Project, was, which, you know, I give them props. They had a very, very interesting uh, advertising marketing strategy. And you know what? Our generation bit, bit, it, bit on it. Hook, line, yep. and sinker. Yep. But to talk about the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, man, we got to talk about how it affected us, what it was it like in our past. So, Jeremy, tell me, man, this movie, what do you remember about it, man? Man, I remember the toys. Why? Like, yeah. But beyond everything, you know, like the toys were the the phenomenon of this. Before the movie, the toys were everywhere. Like you can name the most ridiculous thing, and there was a turtle for that. You ever seen a turtle play hockey before? I had that. You ever you had a, a turtle that was basically a Ghostbuster? It exists. There was a lot of stuff. Like I think I remember playing with the turtles more before the movie came out. Like that was my thing. My parents threw those down my throat. And then the cartoon came, throw that down my throat. So this is where the movie started popping. So I think that's where the, the, the hype was, where, like, I didn't even care if this movie was good or bad. I was excited no matter what for this movie. You know what I mean? So, and I think every kid was excited, too, when they saw that, especially it was going to be a live action, not a cartoon, which yeah. it was very interesting. Yeah, and I, I would have to actually 110% agree with you as far as, like, the, the, the toys... Like, they did a wonderful job, but I was always, always hooked on the cartoons first. Mm -hmm. um, cartoons first, but once I got stuck with the toys, I got those little toys, the ones that, like, you know, transform into the big Ninja Turtles. And, you know, I had a bunch of those, and we made, me and my friends, uh, Scott and uh, Evan and uh, Glenn, we made stop-motion movies with our toys of the Ninja Turtles. So it was something that was, like, so enjoyable. And to hear that the fact that they were going to have a live action movie come out. It was just super impactful for me. And it got me into, and actually the Ninja Turtles got me into uh, martial arts because I wanted to learn oh, martial arts okay. because of it. I mean, you would think as a little Asian kid, it would be because of Bruce Lee. Yeah. I, I might have offended my ancestors for saying it was the Ninja Turtles, but it was the Ninja Turtles. I'm just saying. I think it was the same way too. It's funny because my dad used to teach martial arts, but that didn't drive me to watch, that didn't drive me to like do martial arts. It was more just fun at school. We just kick around and stuff like that. And we, you know, you always say, who your favorite turtle is? And you're going to be that turtle. Like, I'll rock that hell. And all this stuff, you wear the colors, the matching and everything like that. But we definitely have to give a shout out to the video games that were a oh, big yeah. influence. Oh, yeah. The, the big influence, especially uh, probably at the time, Turtles, uh, Turtles 2 the Arcade, I think was a big influence to lead people to watching this movie. They just strike when the iron was hot and it just never left the skill. Oh, I absolutely. I remember the many a times when we had to go to the arcades and just jam that game, which actually reminds me, Jeremy, which one was your turtle? Man, I, I think it was Donatello. I think Donatello was cool. Yeah, I think I liked the staff, and I like that he was kind of the smart guy of, of the group. I know a lot of people were either Leonardo or Raphael, but I was more of the Donatello. I really liked that bow staff. I liked that reach. 
And I think, you know, Michelangelo is like everybody's favorite, even mine. But like, if I had to pick someone outside of Michelangelo, it was Donatello. So I, I would have to say Donatello was my guy. I always loved the Bow staff. I don't know why. I was always like very like connected to the Bow staff just in general, which is why whenever uh, Star Wars uh, episode one came out and like, you know, uh, Darth Maul was using the uh, double lightsaber, I was like, oh, yeah, <laughs> that was like fantastic. Not cool. Yeah. I think, isn't that the star, first Star Wars we ever seen someone like have a double of anything? Oh yeah. The double. Yeah. Most definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Most, most definitely. Now, the the other thing that was really interesting about this movie that I didn't know about it is it was actually heavily influenced by the comic books. Yes. And I wasn't a very big comic book guy. I did, like, enjoy watching, uh, looking at comic books and stuff like that when I was a kid, but I never really read them all that well. How much of the comic books did you actually know about as far as Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles? I knew later on in life that there's a reason why we are we were presented with this version of the Turtles because the comic books were kind of like the more darker of that. And so no kid would want to see that at the time, right? It was just not going to work to see these dark, serious turtles and everything, especially turtles. Like, I don't think, I think kids were not going to take it seriously like that. So to make them colorful, make them stand out a little bit more was a, probably a better idea at the time. But no, I did not dig too deep into those just to be upfront. I never got, yeah, just not at all. I kind of stuck with the video games and the in the TV shows of different generations from then on out. Yeah, I completely agree with you. I was not a big person into the comic books. In fact, I really didn't know much about the comic books at all. I knew there there was a set of comic books, but I didn't really know about those until I was an adult. And now when I watch the movie like now, I look at it so much differently just because I the movie itself was adapted more on the comic books and then actual studios wanted to be more family friendly and more cartoon mm -hmm. oriented or more oriented to the cartoon because they didn't want it to get too dark. And just watching the movie and, and just seeing that, you're just kind of like, oh, I, I get it, right? I get it because like when I watch Batman, like the original Batman where we've talked about too, it was a lot darker. And uh, the fact that it fit the same way here, it was kind of interesting. But with that being said, we get to talk about how we felt in 2023 about the 1990 Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie. Jeremy, what are some of the key things that kind of hit to you? What did you think about the movie? I still think it is definitely rewatchable still. Yeah. I, I can rewatch it over and over again. I think it still holds up pretty well. I think they found a happy medium I think they did a good job with that. Um, not too, not not too dark, but not too light. I think they found that medium, and I think that worked. If it was too if it was too kitty, this movie wouldn't age very well to me. If it was too dark, there might be a slight chance that it might have took itself way too seriously. Uh, so I think they found a good job. I think what they did really well, and you can agree or disagree with this, is the story is very serious, but the characters are very funny. And I think that's where we got it. And like, our turtles are great. And now we are invested of seeing these turtles go through this struggle, you know. So I think they did a good job with that. And I think some of the things I definitely forgot that exists at the time was uh, how much cursing this movie had. Okay. You know, the word, uh, the D word, damn. And damn, damn. And then, you know, I found out another word I'll tell you later, but like, like just the fact that that was like the first couple of the first lines you hear in the movie through Raphael. And I, well, let's get him in the car. Damn. Daniel, back at it again with the white bag. I forgot like, wow, I forgot how much of this happened. And I think as a kid, it was a, it was like, it's like a kind of a taboo. It felt like, like, should I be watching this? It made me feel like, oh. I feel like an adult watching them in a, in a weird way. I completely agree with you. I think in general, when it comes to like the 1980s and the 1990 movies for us, when we were growing up, it really towed the line a lot more than it does in like 2023. Like I feel like the 2023 things, movies, especially that we see, you kind of have to be an adult to catch like those innuendos. I feel like it was a lot darker than I remembered it. There was one moment in this movie that I, I, I don't know if it, if you felt the same way I did, Jeremy, but I about died. Like, 
it was when the Foot Clan and April O'Neil saw each other, like for the first time. And I deliver a message. <laughs> Shut it. Damn! Damn! I will die on this hill. I will die on this hill that 1990 still has the most memorable and the best quotes in any turtle movie. Yeah. I will die on that hill. It is still some great moments. Just like one, that one you did, still great. I, I, I love it. Even from the cursing to the, the meat of Raphael and Casey Jones to Splinter. Splinter has some really great moments. Shredder. Like, name me a movie that did not have a better Shredder intro. That is a freaking awesome intro. I don't know who did the camera work with the long shadow coming in for him. Phenomenal. Phenomenal. It just gives you goosebumps. And I think the movie did a good job of keeping everything a mystery in a weird way. Like, like you saw Shredder, but they kept him so mysterious. Like, you don't know how powerful he really is, right? And same thing with Splitter. Like, you didn't know how powerful he really is or how smart he was. You know, I love that they they saved him for the right moments. Even Casey Jones, they kind of saved him at the right moment. So I think they did a good job of making every moment count in an hour and 30 minutes, basically. Yeah. And I was actually going to add that into what you had to say. With an hour and 30 minutes, this movie went quick. Like, it didn't stop. Like, it was seen to the story, the storage. It covers so much. And I was like, maybe it, maybe it was this, like the, these 1990s movies that I remember back in the day that made me have such a love for like an hour and a half movie because I don't necessarily remember movies being super long. But because it was probably because it was just well paced. Mm -hmm. I thought that this was incredibly paced and, and the immersion was there. Like, I felt like I was immersed into the movie. And shout outs because, man, we can't continue talking about this movie without shout outs to the Jim Henson group. Yeah, for, for their just costume designs and what they did with the turtles and how they did. And that is probably one of their best, if not their best, just design and being able to get it to look so practically just beautiful in there, right? Because nowadays, all we see is a bunch of animation and a lot of like uh, CGI. And then here is the first time we actually see them, you know, in real life. And you can see that they're like, you know, they seem real. Yeah. Yeah. And, and give flowers to those uh, those stunt doubles. You know, they're the ones that are wearing the costume going in to do all those stunts, those flips and stuff. That's all suit. The one thing I forgot to mention that I didn't know about this movie is they got redubbed. So like the actual actors in those turtles didn't hold the lines but then they got redone by other actors so it's like it's kind of crazy but no give them i give them their flowers for just doing all the stunts and those martial arts things so when you ever watch this movie you re or revisit just remember those people are doing those flips and kicks and it's like that is some impressive work i who and burn it up in that outfit whew. i agree i think Raphael was the only person that uh didn't actually have to have a different actor do his line i think that that guy that did Raphael did both okay. the actual stunt and the uh voice now not every movie especially this movie that it isn't a hundred percent perfect but what were some of the things that stood out to you that kind of bothered you a little bit but also kind of surprised you as well that's a good question i think maybe it's going to be weird i like the idea you, the, the thing that i think makes this movie stand out is this movie is for kids and they concentrate on the kids i mean the story is really focused on kids being bad yeah doing thievery and stuff and that's what the main focus and you forget the turtles are kids too so this is these are kids being kids in this in in, in environment uh maybe some of the biggest letdown probably would be the development more of behind the scenes of the foot clan I wish we saw more of the training they'd gone through to be this folk. And it felt like they just like, here's a bandana, good luck. And somehow you knew martial arts, right? When you walked out the door, you know, we never really got to see what they're training. We just saw all the kids do the bad things, kind of like Pinocchio world, that bad island place, just drink and smoke and all that kind of stuff. I think that was a bit of a letdown. I wanted to see more behind the scenes of that. But I think if we had to do the turtles themselves, I think that there was a lack of development with the turtles. Raphael probably got the most development than anybody else. And everybody else was very, maybe just kind of meh. Like Michelangelo, Michelangelo was easy. But I think Donatello and Leonardo did not get the most development. Like, let's be honest, Donatello was basically a Michelangelo, but just kind of, kind of, just a, like a sidekick to Michelangelo more than like Donatello using intellect and using gadgets and stuff and everything. He was just kind of this right-hand man, his buddy. And Leonardo, you know, 
they kept saying he's a leader, but he wasn't really, he wasn't really acting like a leader. He was kind of just like, I'm part of, I'm just here. And they, they throw in their face. So I think Raphael definitely got all the stuff that he, they, out of him for this focus of the story. Because the funny part is, um, based on the comments I heard, that the story of Raphael actually happened to Leonardo. But they switched it, I guess, because Raphael, it just makes more sense for Raphael to work with his anger or something like that. I'd be 100% wrong on that. But those are a couple of things that I would say were maybe the big letdown. What are some for you that definitely stuff? Maybe I maybe I have something to fake, piggyback on. So I wouldn't say this particular part. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start off with something more positive, not necessarily a letdown here. This wasn't okay. a letdown, but more of a surprise. I didn't realize how fast Casey Jones shows up in this. Oh, you didn't know that. Okay. Yeah. I, for some reason, I, I thought he showed up a little further in the movie, but then he kind of shows up like right at the beginning. Like, okay. Like probably like 15 minutes in, probably within the third, first 30 minutes. So that actually kind of shocked me a little bit. I, I was just like, holy crap. He just like shows up. But that also tells you how fast this movie goes and how the pacing goes. One of the things in martial arts, my sensei talked about this movie, The Ninja Turtles. Well, he was just saying, you know, how the Ninja Turtles didn't do anything teamwork wise or they didn't do anything to to gang up against Shredder. Now, of course, needless to say, it's probably because of the costume design <laughs> and having to try to choreograph all that to make it work. That's probably the reasoning why they don't do it. But I do I don't disagree with him where you know, you got four turtles against one shredder. You would think that they would actually try to do like more as a team or do more double team double team maneuvers. I mean, you get more double team maneuvers in like a professional wrestling like the WWE or or even uh -huh. AEW. The other thing is that Shredder, I think, suffers the same thing that Darth Vader suffers. Is that we know they are badass, but they don't feel like they've been portrayed that way. Like, I don't feel like yeah. Shredder necessarily was felt... I didn't feel like Shredder, to me, was at his full potential. The bit, you're, you're saying the buildup was a disappointment for you? Yes. Because okay. the way he, he he goes and does, like, this, the charge with the spear to Master Splinter, and then he, hits him, he gets him with the nunchucks and flips him over. And then, obviously, Shredder does, like, one thing, tries to, like, you know hit him with another, like, dart or something mm -hmm. along that line, and Shredder, like, let's go the nunchucks, and he falls into the trash dumpster, which Casey Jones killed him, by the way. Yeah. No, I get it now, because it felt like they, it felt rushed, right? They were like, yeah. we gotta wrap this up, because we spent so much time on this road to get to this one moment. We didn't get the time to really flesh out Shredder and the, and the rivalry of Splinter. It felt like it just all came together at the very end, and you know, they had their one shine and that's it. I, I I fully agree. But were you surprised too the fact of how many humans actually just I no, I'm sorry. Are you surprised that they did a good job having these turtles be revealed to humans, but they were just not aware in public, right? Like the yeah. turtles were met in the sewers. They were it, you know, they were somewhere where no one else is around when the when a group of kids were watching the whole fight and everything, when the cops came, they were you know, like it was I think it was surprised that humans knew these turtles exist and like no one like was going around or no one else around saw all this happening. Like, yeah. but you can see a fight on a building and all this up and then Shredder falling in a, in a dumpster and dying. Like no one saw this. No public people. Okay. Yeah, I know. Right. Just, just the clan and just the, the turtles and the, the reporter April. Yeah. yeah. Um, and, and also shout out the pizza Hut for being the biggest spokesperson for turtles. But Domino was all over this movie. <laughs> Domino's all over this movie. Domino's everywhere. But Peace Hut's the one promoted it all later. I thought that was funny. They even had a funeral for the Domino's pizza that was spoiled. Like, Do you like penicillin on your pizza? Oh! 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 It, it was it was definitely crazy. So, I mean, Jeremy, your thoughts of the movie in, in general? I loved it. I still love it to this day. I think it's phenomenal. I think that uh, it's still one of my favorite movies of the 90s. It is rewatchable. Still have some of the best quotes. I always keep laughing. I mean, these turtles just have great lines. I don't know why. It's just so funny. Like, Ninja Kick the Damn Rabbit. Come on. Don't just Ninja Kick the Damn Rabbit. Do something. I mean, that's freaking hilarious, you know? Like, I like how much puns are in this, yeah. and they are aware of it. Yeah. But it feels like they don't over overdo it. It is quick. It is a journey that gets through it. I like that medium of both. I think it's still a phenomenal movie to this day. As for the others, I can't speak for those. But for the 1991, 
it is still like the must watch movie of the 1990s. If you had to pick the top 10 of 1990s, that is definitely on my list. So you have to must must watch. No, I, I agree. I think this movie went well, it was well paced. It went quick. It was entertaining to me. Uh, Rotten Tomatoes didn't give it as much of a love uh, as much of a love fest. In fact, we'll talk about the only Ninja Turtle movie here in a second that got a fresh rating by Rotten Tomatoes. But hey, you know what? It was a 1990 nostalgia run for me, and it it hit that nostalgia run. They caught some. It caught me off guard with some a few things that they had in there. I especially love the whole little slap uh, slap April on the side of the head face, the bitch slap. Like that to me, I just about died because I did not remember that at all. But no, like the characters, the uh, the designs, the costuming, and not, and the uh, puppets and puppeteering, I guess you would say that, of everything that was going on is still top notch to me. Splinter was even more fantastic to me actually on this because I I do remember the tears and this the everything that was going, but you really did kind of feel that he was very emotional and everything that was going on, and the lines that he had were very you know very precise but yet very funny. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and shout out seriously, like shout out to one of the best turtle openings, where it's just blackout and you just hear a bunch of kicking butt and just everybody side up like. That, like, right there is a great way to show ninja work. I always love that kind of stuff. I thought that was awesome. Yeah, I know. Yeah. And that was, you know, the funny thing about this, that was actually an accident is because they didn't have enough time to actually choreograph a fight. So they were, you know what we're going to do? Hit the lights, hit them up, and we'll turn it back up. Yes, but it's awesome. But it's a brilliant idea. Brilliant. brilliant. Sometimes, yeah. sometimes great things happen by accident, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And Casey Jones, man, like, perfect Casey Jones, too. Like, surprisingly enough. And he was up against some, some like, heavy hitters like Christian Slater, Kiefer mm-hmm. Sutherland, Keanu freaking Reeves, which I mean, I would love to see a Keanu Reeves, uh, Casey Jones. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. He had the hair. That is true. Yeah. Baldwin and I think Johnny Depp. I think those are the names that they were Ooh. considering what wanting to be Casey Jones. And of course, this guy picked him, which I, I, I should know his name, but I don't. And, uh, you know, we can sit there and continue on talking about the differences between the movie and the comic books. But you know what? We're going to move to the 2023 Teenage Mutant Turtles, uh, Ninja Turtles Mutant Mayhem movie that just came out. I actually had the pleasure to go watch this movie. He, uh, he was the one that we we kind of talked about a little bit about the movies that we were most excited about in 2023. A little bit because we didn't mention that Seth Rogen was doing the TMNT movie, but I, I don't think we actually knew anything about it during that time. Then Jeremy reminded me about this movie, said that the animation looked pretty good and that this this movie looks pretty interesting. So I checked it out on the trailers and I was like, you know what? Yeah, let's do this, man. Let's go watch it. So we did. Jeremy, opinions. Man, good, good follow, good follow up up to the trailer. Like the trailer did not like reveal too many things that were going on. I think that the animation, which people will say is definitely inspired by uh, Spider Man into the Spider Verse across the Spider Verse, which is fine. But it does enough to stand out on its own as feels like a, a little kid drew this cartoon like in his classroom and whatnot. Some of the characters look kind of squiggly and everything like that. I like the shell shaded part. I think just like the 1991, it went by pretty quick. It got through what it wanted to do. Uh, the characters in here definitely had more personality compared to the 1990, of course. I think they lean into what everybody is. It almost felt like it is the combination of every Turtle movie leading up to this. You get um, definitely the characters designed from like the previous Turtle movies that Michael Bay produced. And then you definitely got a lot of the fighting and some of the uh, puns and inside jokes from the 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 90s turtles, right? So you got the best of both worlds. And I think that they did a they did a good job of it felt like they definitely did what the 1990 did. It was it felt comedy first, action second, which is fine with me. Some people like their turtles to be a little bit more serious. Maybe like the 1991 in my head, had, I think the story was serious, but the turtles were still goofy. And I think this movie had some it, serious moments. And I like the fact that this. Out of all the turtle movies, this is the turtle movie that actually actually felt like kids and not feel like they're a little bit bigger than their normal sizes. I think the the live action is a little bit different in that way, but in the cartoon wild, they did a really good job of making these kids feel like kids and got kids to voice these characters. And I thought they did a really good job of that. So, so what the 1990 movie did to Jeremy and my generation of introducing us the 2023. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles uh, Mutant Mayhem did to this generation. And in fact, that uh, they will be doing the same thing when they when this movie is like 
20 something years 20 to 30 years old where they're going to talk about this movie in such a like just nostalgic light because i think this movie is something worth watching guys i mean for us the ones that were born in during the times of the 1990 movies we're never going to tell you that it's better than our dear near and dear 1990 movies objectively speaking probably better we're never going to tell you that it's better but objectively speaking really better um, I think they did a really good job with Baxter Stockman, right? Because I, I, I just didn't think that his, well, I mean, even though he was just barely in the movie, but his creation kind of became like the main villain of this movie and how they portrayed like just that itself, I thought was really good. And then the, between the comedy, the action, I think they didn't have a crisis of figuring out whether they wanted to be like the original comics or if they wanted to gear it towards kids. This one knew they were gearing it towards kids and they went for it. Something that ha- something that was, you know, different from the 1990s movie where it went well, when it was first recorded, it was first recorded for comic book uh, preciseness, you know, homage to the comic books, then kind of edited to be more kitty. Whereas this movie was just straight kitty. And it's not a bad thing that it is, because I think it does a good job of showing you like the action, the fun, the joy of what it is to be a teenager and growing up to figuring out how to how to help a city that may not like them. And I think it's a wonderful movie. In fact, I think the future of this series feels I feel more at ease with the future of this series in the hands of what they're doing now with Mutant Mayhem going forward than I ever did with Michael Bay. That's not a knock to Michael Bay, but it wouldn't necessarily it is to me. necessarily one of my favorites when it comes to. But this one is a need to watch for a lot of people, and I think it'll be a good one for your kids, especially if you want to bring him into something that was. You know, of course, during my age, my, with my age and uh, Jeremy's age, you know, kids with our, our age group and stuff like that, having kids, you know, it'd be something good to bring them into that might fit into kind of what we grew up with. And check it out, man. I think it's really good. Yeah, I, I 100% agree. Um, I think that this is definitely a must watch. There are a lot of jokes in there that adults will definitely get. And there is nostalgia they, they will throw back back at you. So, yeah, I I agree with that. Hey, guys, but thank you for checking out this episode of Past Attractions, the 1990 Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle movie. And as always, if you enjoy our stuff, man, please hit that like and subscribe to check out Jeremy. Tell him to check out what? Well, first of all, grab yourself a pizza because if if you're not eating a pizza while you're watching this video, something's wrong with you. But while you're doing that, leave a comment down below. And, uh, you know, give us a like as part of the in-game boss program and network of gaming and other variety shows and definitely check out all our other content that we have on here. But we'll love to hear your comments down below about what is your opinion of the 1990. If you have watched the 2023 Turtles and you want to know what the 1990 want, check it out and then leave a comment. Tell us if you, uh, you like it or not. And for the people that haven't watched it yet, watch it and leave a comment down below. Tell us what you think. I would love to hear your thoughts. Tell us, you know, what's in your, uh, turtle and a half shell. Yes. By the way, I always wanted to say this. Turtles in a half shell, guys, are dead turtles. There's no such thing. But hey, two <laughs> videos on the screen for you guys to check out of our past episodes. Go, 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 ninja, go, ninja, go, go, ninja, go, ninja, go.